My name is David Corbett. I was a third class petty officer in the Navy Seabees. Uh, well, I had got drafted into the Army, but I was very lucky to get into the Navy. Uh, they took me in before the Army could get me. My boot camp was up in Davisville, Rhode Island. I was what was called uh, an IPO. Uh, we was able to get in because uh, they had this special program opened that the Navy needed Seabees desperately, so they gave us rank, which made us instant petty officers, we were called. Uh, we went to Davisville, Rhode Island, was where our boot camp was at. We were supposed to have a four-week boot camp and go directly to the battalions and start work and go to what we needed to do, bring the battalions up to wartime strength because Vietnam was very bad condition and get caught up in, in the war battalions in Vietnam. Uh, we were directly sent to whatever battalions were needed at the time directly over whatever was needed. I was sent to San Diego to the Amphibious Battalion, ACB-1, myself and several other people. We was lucky enough to stay there for an extra, I think it was three months. We had in a few more months of survival training and weapons training. We learned how to shoot on a rifle range and survival training, surviving in a desert and also in fighting in a, in a village. We learned fighting the Viet Cong in a village. We had extra training. We were very lucky. Other guys did not have that. They went directly over without no extra training. But we were very lucky. Other guys had no extra training. They went directly in. So then from there, I went uh, to Japan. From Japan, we was in the other, our battalion was split. Half of our battalion was in San Diego. Half was in Japan. We went to Japan. Myself, personally, I got a special operation like three weeks after I was in Japan, to go to Vietnam to build a very special pontoon bridge. We built that bridge, and then uh, we got that completed. Uh, it took us six months. Then I went back to Japan and started my regular duty, uh, which was, uh, I was a steel worker as a welder, repairing whatever we needed repaired. And then uh, I was put in a special blue team. The blue team went back and forth from Vietnam whenever it was called for. We was on teams. We had all colored teams, different colors, whatever team was called upon to go to wherever they needed to go. The Philippines, Korea, we covered all of Asia, uh, the half of the battalion. Uh, they were sent many places. We were like 15 or 16 people to a team. And whenever the team had to go somewhere, they were gone. I had, I wound up in Vietnam probably five times total. We'd go do the job, whatever it would take, one month or two months, the back, then we'd go back to Japan, work a while, and whenever a job came up, whatever team was turned to go to wherever they had to go, they would go do the job. Myself, my team, the blue team, like I said, we'd go different places. I was lucky enough, my team seemed like we would always go to Vietnam. Some teams went to Korea, some teams went to the Philippines, wherever the job was at. But altogether, my experience was not too super bad. What happened in Vietnam, we saw a lot of things. I saw a lot of things being shot at. We were shot at. I had to run many, many times. I saw a lot of action but I never participated, thank the Lord. That's why I joined the Navy Seabees, because I didn't want to run around through the woods chasing them little stinkers. I'd rather do what I did. I was trained as a welder. I was educated as a welder. That was my job. I didn't want to learn how to run through the woods chasing them little buggers. So that's why I did what I did. So everything was going good in my life the way I would planned it. I did not have to participate. But that's the whole thing, I only saw it. I have a tremendous amount of pictures because I had a little pocket camera, a little Kodak. And that Kodak little camera took one big beating. I dropped it many times. But boy, I got an awful lot of pictures. I got maybe 500 pictures, maybe more, because I just, I could pull it out instantly and I could take pictures of things all the time. I have many, many, many pictures of everything. Everything we built, 
everything we did. My lieutenant, he would make me a photographer many times, which got me out of a lot of work. He said, Corbett, you can be photographer. You go take pictures of what we're doing. And they took my pictures and used them for training on some of the jobs. Because what he'd let me do, I was able to get and do and take the pictures. And I got to make pictures of how the job was to be. And they copied my pictures. And I don't know if they still got them or not, because the job is not done that way no more. The job's all gone. They do it entirely different. But at that time, the pictures I took and the way I took them with just a little pocket Kodak. The way they came out, they, they said, these are wonderful pictures. These are great. They took them and they copied them. And of course, I said, I want them back. Said, no problem. A couple weeks later, I got them back. And they got those. So I don't know what they did, but I got me out of a lot of, a lot of the hard work, man. When you're working at a 100 degree temperature, man, and you're busting buns on iron pipe, I felt bad for the boys because I did that job before. I knew what they were going through because I did it. And you're busting it, and it's hot and sweaty, man. And I said, okay, yes, sir, in a second. Same thing with the other jobs. When you used to do them and you got lucky enough to get out of it, you didn't ask no questions. You just said, yes, sir. i do it in a minute. But everything worked out fine overall. It was a good out experience, and in Japan it was the same thing. I had good leadership in Japan, very good people. Everything worked out very well.